The Milestone Fundamentals of IP Surveillance Systems provides a foundation of knowledge that will help you as you move on to design, install, configure, troubleshoot, and interact with Milestone IP Surveillance Systems. In this video tutorial, you will learn about camera fundamentals, including surveillance objectives, standard resolutions, and optical properties. Let's take some time to explore how IP cameras work. IP cameras operate when direct or reflected light enters the camera. The camera lens focuses the image on the sensor, which digitizes, encodes, and transmits the image in digital data packets. The image sensor is a small electronic chip inside the camera which converts the optical image into a digital format, just like a digital camera. Image sensors come in various sizes and two main types. CCDs and CMOs. The image sensor, size, and type are given in each camera's specifications and cannot be changed. Let's look more closely at the different ways that we measure image and video properties. The focal length measures the distance between the lens and the image sensor, usually expressed in millimeters. You can change the angle of view and field of view by changing the focal length, in other words, by moving the lens closer or farther from the image sensor. The angle of view measures the maximum height and width the camera is capable of seeing through a lens, expressed in degrees. A larger angle of view shows more height and width of the subject. A smaller angle of width shows less height and width. Finally, we need to consider camera exposure. Camera exposure determines how light or dark and sharp or blurry an image appears when it has been captured. This is determined by three camera settings, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO speed. Understanding their uses and interdependency can help you set up the camera correctly. So let's explore those. Increasing the aperture, an adjustable hole through which light passes, allows more light to the sensor and reduces the depth of field. Reducing the aperture allows less light to the sensor, but increases the depth of field. This seems somewhat counterintuitive because as the f-stop decreases, the area of the opening increases. The shutter speed is the duration of the exposure. Shutter speed measures how long the digital sensor is exposed to light and is usually measured in fractions of a second. For objects in motion, shorter shutter speeds result in a clearer image. The longer the shutter speed, the more light sensitivity. However, movement becomes blurry and renders the images unusable for surveillance purposes. Many cameras adjust the shutter speed automatically to ensure sufficient light to the camera's image sensor. ISO speed is the sensitivity of the camera's sensor to a given amount of light. Increasing the ISO speed increases gain or brightness. However, in order to do so, it introduces image noise. Now let's talk about aspect ratio. The ratio of a horizontal resolution to the vertical resolution of an image is called the aspect ratio. Common aspect ratios include 16 by 9, 4 by 3, and 5 by 4. 16 by 9 aspect ratios, like the one seen here, have the majority of the field of view focused on the horizontal axis, with less video recorded in the top and bottom portions of the image. A 4 by 3 aspect ratio has a taller field of view and shows more of the image at the top and bottom compared to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. A 5 by 4 aspect ratio has a taller field of view and shows more of the image at the top and bottom compared to a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Be sure to select the correct aspect ratio for the setting you want to capture. The field of view, FOV, is that part of the scene that is visible through the camera at a particular position and orientation in space. In other words, it's simply what the camera sees. The FOV depends on the lens and the aspect ratio of the camera. It's important to be aware of what cameras need to capture and what they can exclude, because capturing what is relevant is key. It's important to keep the field of view as limited as possible. Recording unnecessary areas takes up valuable storage space. The camera in this example should be pointed down further, perhaps to capture actions in front of the plane, or it could be zoomed in further, which, if the same pixels per inch ratio is to be maintained, may enable a lower resolution. Here are a couple of recommendations when considering a camera's FOV. 
always have an endpoint for the FOV that is within the area of interest and within the focus area of the camera. Do not point a camera to look into infinity, an extremely common mistake throughout the industry. There's likely nothing in the sky or in the mountains that we need to see in such a shot. Exclude from motion detection any remaining areas not of interest. 